everybody, welcome to this episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama. It's the camera store that has everything for photographers. Well, you probably recognize this studio. You've seen it here on Adorama TV before. It's Gavin Hoey's studio, and Gavin is joining me today. Come on out, Gavin. Gavin has uh, volunteered to be my model. And so I thought, well, I'm going to do a portrait of Gavin in his studio in the style of Gavin Hoey. And so to do that, I'm going to take a bunch of simple lighting principles, add them together and get something that is, um, I don't know, in the style of Gavin and something that would sort of honor your uh, teaching. And so we're going to try that. And so to start, what we're going to do is I'm just going to take a very simple portrait of Gavin. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to get something that is nice and tight, just your head, maybe your shoulders. And I want to make sure that this background back here falls completely into darkness. Now, to do that, we're going to use a softbox with a grid. We're going to put it really close to Gavin. We're going to have light that falls off rapidly. That's the inverse square law. And then we're going to start shaping things from there. So let's start with that. All right, so we've got this. This is my flashpoint speed light. It's a 360. And so I'm going to set this right about here. Again, this is nothing that's really complicated. I've got a speed light and it's just uh, headed right toward Gavin. I'm going to meter this. And I wanted to shoot this at about F8. I'm shooting with a 50 millimeter lens at ISO 200. So F8 is going to give us nice depth of field on Gavin, but the background will fall out of focus. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to meter this and this meters at Bam, this meter's at nine, so take a half step back just a little bit. There we go, we're at F8. So we were just right on the edge there. And now I'm going to take a, just a test shot. And here we go, Gavin, look right at me. Perfect, that is exactly what I want. All right, so we got that. And it looks exactly as we would expect. It's Gavin sort of in a sea of darkness. So I'm gonna show Gavin what he looks like here. I like that expression. It is exactly what I'm looking for, but it's lifeless. There's just not much to this portrait. We need to start adding some flavor. So the second thing I want to do is add a vignette of light around Gavin. Now, I, instead of lighting the back of Gavin's head, I'm actually gonna light this dark background here. And so I have a Profoto uh, B2. So I'm gonna turn this guy on. I'm gonna put it right behind Gavin. And so what this is doing is it's going to light up the background. The light and the light stand is going to be hidden by Gavin himself. So Gavin stand there and then I need to line this up. So I'm just gonna take a look through my camera and I can see that Gavin's there. Now I haven't metered that light on the back at all yet. I'm gonna sort of eyeball this. Looks pretty good, that shot. I need to uh, elevate this light just a tiny, tiny bit. So I'm gonna do that. Again, I'm just eyeballing this. So, uh, okay, now we have that all set. I think the power is about right. I just sort of got lucky with that, but we're gonna take it. All right, so Gavin, look right at me. We're just gonna take a couple shots, and then we're gonna do one extra thing here. Perfect, I like that one more. Make sure you didn't blink. Okay, so that looks okay, but one of the things that we can do is this background here, it's got some gray, but hidden inside that gray is some blue. So I'm going to force the color temperature from 5200 Kelvin, which is balanced for the flash, down to 3600 Kelvin. That's gonna make that much more uh, bluish back there, but it's gonna <laughs> make Gavin's face look a little bit wonky. We'll fix that in post and I'll show you how to do that. All right, now that we have that, well, I think we need to take it to the next level. And that next level is we need some props. And so Gavin, I'm gonna click my fingers. And when I do, I want you to come back here wearing something that is in the style of Gavin Hoey. Here we go. And just like that, Gavin is wearing a bomber jacket, some crazy goggles, and I don't know where you got that, sh that uh, hat, but it, it looks awesome. So what we're gonna do now is I'm going to take a couple pictures of Gavin, and then we're gonna dump those into Lightroom. We're gonna play around, but let's just get the shot first. So everything's the same. We have this softbox set up. We've got our nice light on the background. We've got our color temperature shifted. And so here we go. We're gonna just, yeah, there we go. Perfect, Gavin. I'm gonna shoot this, and then we're gonna go to the next step. All right, Gavin, that was awesome. Now, the key to this, and this is something that I've learned from Gavin, is that uh, for something like this to work, you need expressions and emotions and all that kind of stuff. And then once that's done for this to work, I need to throw this into Lightroom and do some playing around and add some texture and fix some things. And so we're gonna do that 
right now. I'm in Lightroom and I'm looking at one of the images that I shot with Gavin. It was a lot of fun, but you can see right out of the camera with the normal color, this just isn't as lively as I'd want it to be. We need some Gavin Hoey style post-production to bring this to life. And so what I've done here is this is a virtual copy of an image that I've already done some tonality changes to. So let's take a look at that. I've cropped this to a 16 by nine. The other thing that I did is I changed the color temperature. So I didn't go all the way down to 3600 like we talked about earlier, but I did take this down to 3942, which is enough for me to get this nice blue background, but it's also enough to make Gavin look like he's in lack uh, in really high need of some oxygen. His lips are a weird color. He needs some adjustments. So to do that, I'm gonna go down here to the hue panel and then I'm gonna just take the magenta slider and you can see if I slide this to the left, his face gets really purple. He needs to breathe. And if I go to the right, you can see, well, now we're bringing the color back to his skin and it looks okay. So I'm just playing with the magenta slider here I'm also going to take the purple slider here. I'm going to take that up to about the 80s. So I figured this out just by playing with this just a little bit. You can also use this little dot here. When you click on this, you can drag it over to the image and then you can uh, click and drag on the image and it will tell you which colors are changing. And so that's how I figured out this is magenta and purple. The other thing I want to do is I want to just change the saturation of the magenta and purple as well. So I'm going to take the saturation down just a little bit here. I'm going to take the purple saturation saturation down quite a bit. So around 90, something like that. Okay, so now we've got our basic tonality all set, but it's still a little bit lifeless. So what I need to do here is I'm going to use Nick Analog Effects Pro 2. It's a free plugin. So I can click Edit In Analog Effects Pro 2. This is going to give us some texture. It's going to give us some punch. It's going to give us a lot of fun. And the nice thing is, A, Analog Effects Pro 2 is free, so you can download it and install it. And it's really easy to use. You really don't have to know anything about it to make it work. And so it's going to load the image straight from Lightroom into Analog Effects Pro. And then right out of the gate here, I've got these cameras, and I can just start clicking on them without even knowing what I'm doing and getting some really interesting looks. So what I've done is I've played in uh, Analog Effects Pro here and I've created a preset called Gav Max because I want to apply this to all the images that I retouch. And so this is my texture and my tonality and all my punch. And you can see right out of the gate, this looks pretty good. So I'm going to save this. It's going to save all my changes and bring that back into Lightroom as a new TIFF image that I can then do some more work on because this image does need a little bit more work. Okay, here's our image. Now what we need to do, if you've learned anything from Gavin, is that we need a focal point in our image. And right now, Gavin's hands are competing for our attention because they are brighter than his face. And so all we need to do here is go to a local adjustment brush. I'm going to double click effect so that resets everything. Then I'm going to take my highlights down to about negative 35, 36, something like that. I've got a nice soft brush. I'm just going to paint onto Gavin's hands here. And that just takes the highlights down. So now his hands, they look natural, but they are not competing for the uh, focal point of this image. But his face needs some retouching as well. So what I'll do here is I'm going to get a new brush double click effect to take that back to nothing. I'm going to take the exposure of this brush up by about a stop, maybe a little bit more. And then I'm just going to get a nice big soft brush and paint on Gavin's face. There we go. Now his face is brighter than his hands, but his forehead is too bright. So I'm going to get another brush here, take the exposure down by about half a stop. And then I'm just going to paint right up here on top of his head. And there you go. Now we can turn these adjustment brushes on and off and you can see that we've really made a nice dramatic change. Now, of course, this is a Gavin Hoey style retouch. And so I need to take my clarity. I'm going to take that up by oh, about 20, something like that. And now we've got an image that is punchy and fun and it's got some texture and some life. And let's take a look at our final images. Well, that's all there is to it, Gavin. Thanks for teaching me some tricks to take something that is simple and make it look a little bit punchy and fun. And thanks for being a good sport about wearing the 
uh, bomber jacket and the goggles and all that stuff. That was really fun. Don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV because that way you won't miss a single episode by Gavin and all the other people that are contributing. Also check out the Adorama Learning Center. There are tons of articles that help you understand things like the inverse square law and what a honeycomb grid is and all of those types of things. And uh, thanks again. And I will see you again next time.